On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden and Hunter making an idiot of himself. <laughs> that beats a partridge in a pear tree any day of the week in my book. This past Wednesday, the House of Representatives voted to push forward with a formal impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden on a strict party lines vote. And naturally, this touched off the usual denunciations from the Biden camp and its pals in the media. The New York Times set the tone for the coverage, huffing and puffing in almost every sentence of its reporting that there was no evidence of high crimes or misdemeanors. It's great reading all of this in the Times because, you know, we all remember the amazing job they did holding their reporting on Donald Trump to that sort of high evidentiary standard. Now, in doing this, of course, the New York Times was following the lead of Democrats on Capitol Hill who were getting all the talking points out there, including claims the whole impeachment inquiry was based on zero evidence. They have no evidence, of course, to support this inquiry, but since this majority never get, lets facts get in the way of a good set of Fox News talking points, here we are. They also made the claim that this is somehow just about, I don't know, Hunter's drug addiction being used against the president, who is a man of decency and integrity, if you don't mind. And Republicans are weaponizing this addiction and using it to attack President Biden, a man of decency and integrity. Frankly, it's one of, if not the most despicable things I've seen in my whole career here in Congress. Right. Of course, it's a matter of public record that the then vice president met with Hunter's associates from China, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Ukraine and Russia, directly contradicting statements Biden made during his 2020 presidential campaign and while in office. In fact, despite what these guys are all saying, there is prima facie evidence of an influence peddling scheme and that the president did benefit from it. The claims that this is somehow just about Hunter's addictions is also a nonsense, because if that was the case, well, wouldn't that bolster the idea that Hunter was indeed using his father's influence as a carrot to sell to foreign powers to fuel his expensive party lifestyle? Oh, also, speaking of Hunter, the upstanding, honorable, law-abiding citizen that he is, with skills ranging from oil and gas expert to amateur internet pornographer, well, he has refused to comply with a congressional subpoena. You see, Hunter doesn't want to testify in private. He says his testimony might be selectively leaked against him. He wants to instead grandstand in front of Congress and presumably make a big show that, in his head, believes will exonerate him. In this, I have a weird suspicion that Hunter on some level believes that he will cut a figure, something along the lines of Michael Corleone in The Godfather Part Two, the criminal mastermind behind the family business, you know, besting all the rubes in Congress and getting away with it. Of course, if you're familiar with The Godfather films, you also know that Hunter is more Fredo than Michael. Here's a bit of Hunter defending himself not to Congress, but in front of Congress. I'm here today to answer at a public hearing any legitimate questions Chairman Comer and the House Oversight Committee may have for me. I'm here today to make sure that the House Committee's illegitimate investigations of my family do not proceed on distortions, manipulated evidence, and lies. And, according to Hunter, his father had nothing to do with any of his businesses. Let me state as clearly as I can. My father was not financially involved in my business, not as a practicing lawyer, not as a board member of Burisma, not in my partnership with a Chinese private businessman, not in my investments at home nor abroad, and certainly not as an artist. Interesting because you parse the words there, and it turns out there's a lot that is left unsaid. Joe didn't have to be financially involved. All he had to do was show up to be seen to be the product Hunter was selling. And we also know that, just coincidentally, Hunter's client, Burisma, 
benefited from having the then vice president tie Ukrainian aid to firing the Ukrainian prosecutor who was investigating Burisma. And we know that a Russian oligarch with ties to Hunter was mysteriously left off a sanctions list after Russia invaded Ukraine. And much, much more. Oh, and of course, this would not be a Biden family Christmas story unless we wrapped it all up in a big bow of hypocrisy. Here's Joe Biden in 2007 backing contempt citations for Republicans who refused to answer a subpoena. Subpoenaed witnesses have got to show up, he wrote. And here's Biden in 2021 talking about subpoenaed witnesses to the January 6th committee. Subpoenas on the January 6th committee. I hope that the committee goes after them and uh, holds them accountable. Should they be prosecuted by the I, Justice I do, Department? yes. There you have it. Honor the subpoena or go to jail. Unless, of course, your last name is Biden. Anyway, it should be a very Merry Christmas around the Biden family table because these investigations will be their very own Jelly of the Month Club. You know, the gift that keeps on giving. I'd say ho, 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 but Hunter might get too excited.